at his home. They're just a thousand miles away. Ladies and gentlemen, we got something we need to talk to y'all about. Uh, not about this stuff. I'm doing some stuff in the background, but down at the bottom of my screen, I have a bunch of documents on the infant estate because I've been doing some work. You see, attaining the age of majority is prima facie evidence of emancipation, or it creates a rebuttable presumption that emancipation has occurred. Okay. While it has been stated that attaining the age of majority is only prima facie evidence of emancipation, it has also been said that emancipation is presumed to have occurred upon the age of the majority. Although the presumption is rebuttable, it may be overcome by evidence that conditions have made it impossible for self-employment so that the parent is required to furnish support. As in the case of a physically or mentally disabled adult child incapable of supporting him or herself, requiring the parent's duty to support of support to continue after the child reaches majority, United States sovereign parental guardianship. The fact that an adult child continues to live in his or her parents' home is insufficient to establish non-emancipation, where there is no evidence that the adult child is ill or disabled at the time of his or her reaching majority. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've been looking for this type of case legal case law. Now, this is talking about the maintenance of a child. Okay, so let me get rid of this. Necessities for which an infant is liable, despite his general inability to contract, has no exact definition. The term is flexible and varies according to, get that out of there, the facts of each individual case. A particular infant must have an actual need for articles furnished, not for the mere ornament or pleasure. Articles must supply infant's personal needs, either those of his body or those of his mind, education and maintenance. Although the term is not confined to things as are required, hold on, I gotta give it some authority. It needs my permission to get permission, see? Permission given. Okay, you meant granted, right? No, I meant given for the bare substance, but are those requisites, prerequisites, for maintenance of existence, depending on social position and situation of life of infant. Okay, now look, this affirmance of a contract by an infant is completely puts an end to the contract's evidence, I mean existence, because if it doesn't exist anymore, it ain't evident. Both as to him and as an adult, with whom he contracted. Infants can recover payment made to an adult and an adult is entitled to return whatever's received of the infant. So ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to say here? There are some things about infancy that many of you do not understand. However, if the law says that if you have not gained control of the securities held in your minor account, that you remain an infant, ah. Ah, uh, it doesn't like what I was doing. Okay, I'll take care of that later. It's not important right now. And the reason why it's not important because I have to reinstall that program to get it to work the way it's supposed to be working. Okay, other than that, it's going to be giving me an error. And not a big error, but a small error. Because it's still going to let me use it, but it ain't going to let me use it, use it. You know, like I want to use it. Use it? Got it. Okay, so while I'm doing that in the background, let me go ahead and explain some things. There is one document that I haven't shown you, and I'm about to show it to you in a moment, though. Okay, is it this one? I don't think it's that one. No, that's the one we just say it. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. We'll come back to you. No, this is adverse possession. I don't need him. He, he just... He just got adversely dispossessed. Uh, don't need this one. This is adverse possession as well. Just a different form. Come, come. Get on out of here. We don't need you. Uh, is it the contract? This is the one. Whew. Did y'all know that police officers are invitees? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, in Cameroon, 
the decision to classify a policeman as an invitee evidenced a rational approach. First, the plaintiff's presence, the police officer, on the premises was as a visitor in the interest of public safety, but primarily for the protection of the defendant's property. A regular pattern of activity had been established. Thus, in this case, a serious objection to classifying a policeman as an invitee is eliminated. The impossibility of forecasting the precise place to which an officer's duty may call him and the infrequency of his improbable visits second the policeman when descending defendant's staircase did not do so in an unusual manner and in an emergency situation. Thus, the circumstances of this case differentiates it from those cases arising in other jurisdictions which deny recovery. Under these particular circumstances, the officer had the right to assume that the premises, aside from the obvious dangers, were reasonably safe for the purpose for which he was upon them and the proper precaution had been taken to make them so. Now look, why are we talking about this? First, need y'all to know, I want y'all to pay attention to two things. First of all, I need y'all to pay attention to this document. It's on the website, put it up there today. Come on now. See, my computer has been going a little bit. Like I told you, somebody is tapping into my system. You need to get a firewall. You need to use this. You need. It doesn't matter what I use. Do you guys understand that they can get around all of that because all of those programs have to go through the same system? They're all regulated. They have to follow the same protocols. Do you know that's why you cannot have a 258-bit encryption legally? 2,568-bit encryption legally? It's not permitted. Let's go up here and let you see what document. Uh-oh. It ain't letting me. There it is. Contracts, infants, disaffirmance, infants, right to void. Okay. Because them infants, they be voiding things. That's, we can't, I keep trying to tell you, void equals disaffirmance. Y'all don't believe me. I keep telling y'all, you're supposed to put void on everything, but that just don't look right. I don't give a, I'm sorry. Keep doing what you're doing, baby. It's okay. When you get in trouble, you're going to come to me and I'm going to tell you, you. I done told you what to do and you didn't want to listen. So you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, bleep you. That That's what I was actually saying. Wasn't saying anything else because I don't do the other thing. But that that's what I was saying. Many of you come to me and you ask me, hey, can I get some advice? And I say, yeah, corner drugstore or neighborhood barbershop. You're going to get all the advice you want. I mean, I want some advice from you. Oh, you want my advice? Well, if you want my advice, you need to quit asking me for my advice. That that That's my advice, okay? Because only I can give my advice. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what I advise all of you to do. This document is only nine pages. At least that's what my indicator here says. Nine pages, 131 words. We put it up on the site today. This is a document that talks about the following. Hold on. We're going to go to the next paragraph. Because this is an officer trying to sue somebody who came into the person's home as a visitor. He wasn't there on an emergency. Apparently, he knew this person. And as he was coming down the staircase, something happened. I, don't, I want you all to understand something. I don't care what happened. What happened to the officer is not important, not the subject of this video. I went too far, y'all. He just keeps going too far. Lordy be, if he just slowed his own down, he wouldn't have to go too far. Because he slowed down, he'd be able to see where he's going. But he's so blinded by trying to get everything done in one swoop. Look, if you don't leave me the... <sighs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out. It ain't going to let me. And I'm, I'm transferring some files, y'all. See that right there? Transferring them to my cell phone. And so it don't like that. And then I'm also downloading for Microsoft Office. 
So it don't like that. It, it's just saying you're doing too much. And I'm like, look here, mother, I'll do whatever I want. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you go ahead and do whatever you want. I'm going to do whatever I want. And that way everybody can do what they want and get what they want. And it be on like that, like Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong? Nobody play Donkey Kong no more. Nobody even know what that means anymore. Donkey Kong? Who is Donkey? Anyway, contracts. Infants disaffirmance. Infants rights to void. And Keffer, some people say Kiefer, but in Keffer, the Fred Home Orders Incorporated, the plaintiff, an emancipated 20-year-old minor. <clears throat> An emancipated 20-year-old minor married and employed full-time basis purchased a second-hand station wagon from the defendant, Fred Hall Motors Incorporated. After paying the full purchase price of $412 and signing the defendant's standard sales contract, signing the contract, the plaintiff took possession of the vehicle sometime later the minor experienced 20 years old the minor experienced difficulty with the automobile which he claimed was caused by a cracked block and it probably was used station wagon and all after the dealer failed what did the dealer fail to do we got to uh oh too far you keep going too far don't stop it Got to hold on. It, it's taking its time. See, I like this. Permitting the minor to freely void his contract, not for necessities. If it ain't for necessities, he can void it. That's what they're trying to tell y'all. So what are necessities? They say that that ain't clearly defined, but it's those things that are necessary for you to get through life. You need them. You can't do without them. A cell phone, a house, a car, you know, one of each. Now, the Howell Motors, they failed to respond to the plaintiff's attempt to secure some adjustment, including a request for the dealer to take the car back. The plaintiff contacted an attorney who wrote a letter to the defendant stating that the plaintiff was a minor at the time of the sale, 20 years old. The letter also declared the contract void, tendered, returned for the automobile, and demanded repayment of the purchase price. Defendant Howell, having failed to respond to the request, failed to respond to the request, failed to respond to the request, and action was commenced. Judgment in favor of the plaintiff was entered for the full purchase price only. No, it should have been for more than that. That fool knew what he was supposed to do and didn't do it. And you got to pay some legal fees too. Three issues are raised on appeal, two of which are relevant to this article. Is an emancipated minor over the age of 18 legally responsible for his contracts? And two, as an infant effectively disaffirmed his contract, or excuse me, has an infant effectively disaffirmed his contract for the purchase of an automobile when he did not return the automobile or certificate of title as of the time of the trial. Inextricably associated with these issues are two issues more subtle than either of the above. But of greater significance and impact than either of them. The first is whether the minor can ever effectively, irrevocably divest himself of his property, assuming that the adult party supplied no necessity to the minor in consideration of the transfer. And secondly, what are the rights and duties of the parties when the minor has disaffirmed? In addressing itself to the first issue, the court reasserts the general rule, that is, the contract of a minor other than for necessities, is either void or voidable at his option. See, a minor can void any contract he wants. Get into a contract and he just say, void, I ain't doing that no more. You can't mess with my credit either, mother. Okay, that's what minors can do. Understand that. Uh, th th there's the case right there. That case right there. That case right there. Same case. See, 158, 158, 158. There it is right there. So just type in 158nw.2d, 2nd District, at page 290, 289-290. That's all you got to do. All right, let's continue. In addition to necessities, several other exceptions were cataloged. 
those shielded from this affirmance by statute, such as contracts for educational loans and those related to marriage and child support. Ah, uh, you see what they did? After special, specifically setting forth the above exceptions, the court examined the psycho philosophy. Underlying the doctrine of minors is affirmance. There's a philosophy. Number eight, the philosophy stems from the policy of protecting minors against his own improvidence and the imposition of a more mature and worldly adult by permitting the minor to freely void contracts not for necessities. See, American Law Review, third edition. That's what I went and looked at. That, that's your did. Minor is under infant. Anyway, there followed a review of some paradoxes in today's society, such as the status of the minor in tort and criminal actions, the minor's ability to marry, and finally his obligation to serve in the armed forces. He has an obligation? I don't think so. But surprisingly enough, upon weighing the merits and conclusion, the conclusion was reached that the reason for allowing that obstacle, the ability for a minor to disaffirm his contract, to remain viable at this point outweighs those for casting it aside. The second issue question whether the procedure for disaffirming in this case were adequate. This matter was rather similarly dismissed in that the court concluded, citing Williston, I would look at this case, that the minor's demand for a return of his money plus the letter from the his attorney to the car dealership suffice. Yes, because that showed disaffirmance. And this is the case, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Any act which clearly shows intent to disaffirm a contract or sell the, is sufficient for the purpose of disaffirmance. A tender or even an offer to return a consideration or its proceeds to the vendor is sufficient. This is the Willison contract. Uh-oh. Second Willison contract consideration. Uh, not consideration, contract. Subsection 243, 234. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to find out what this Wilson person is talking about. This is uh, my Microsoft Word, and it ain't got no edit capabilities. Oh, love TKO. This is uh, my boy. Just another sad song. I think I better let it go. And do you know how he uses Corpus Juris Secundum Infant 71? This is what I went and looked for in Puerto Rico. Now, there was somebody who told me he had access to Westlaw and invited me to contact him. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't do that. Don't tell me you have some important information or you have some information you think that might be beneficial to me as if that's going to get me to call you. Because we know that my calling you is going to come with question. It ain't going to become just a conversation with your offer. It's going to come with questions respecting your offer. In other words, a quid pro quo. I don't do quid pro quos, ladies and gentlemen. I don't appreciate it. So that's just me saying it out loud so everybody can know. Uh, there are a lot of you who are new who don't know me. And after you get to know me, you ain't gonna like me. But I don't care. What did Tupac say? I simply don't give... I mean, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't really care whether or not you appreciate the fact that there are things that I just don't allow. That's not my issue. See, however, this right is of no practical help to the minor who has executed his contract or who has transferred his property. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this article is about minors. Now remember, hold on now. They say a minor, after attaining majority, he has a certain limited period of time to disaffirm contracts, okay, or they are deemed to be still in effect. Well, hold on. Let me tell you about the age of the majority. Let me get rid of this too. Um, I was going to finish something, but I can't finish it now. I need this one, so we put this one here. Got to get back to both of those in a minute. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
I need to show y'all something. We can go to this jurisdictional thing right here that we did in the last video. And then I'm going to let you guys get on about your day. I keep telling people it's 12 CFR, but it's 31 CFR 363.6. That's where we're going, because we're going to be talking about infants. Infants, minors, juveniles, delinquents, the exact same thing in law. Sorry, I know, I know, I know they're different, and we call adolescents, and all we come up with all these words to say the same thing. That's how stupid English is. Wait a minute. I just put that in there, and it didn't even do it. It didn't go nowhere. Let's do that and see if that, that do it. Nope, didn't do it, y'all. I know I typed it in. All right, 31 CFR. Backstabbers, y'all. Them, them backstabbers. Okay, let me explain something to all of you. Like I said, I know somebody has been interfering with our system, interfering with the emails, but the thing is I have to connect to the Internet, and I'm connecting through my phone. So it doesn't matter what service I have, I'm still connecting through my phone. You follow me? So that's how they're doing it. And that's okay, okay? Because we know what I'm doing. We know I'm going right directly to where I need to be going. Now, see, I could have gone to Cornell Law, and I should have went to Cornell Law, but we're going to go to the uh, government info website because it's the official website of the United States government. Do you know that there are a bunch of backstabbers out there and they keep smiling in my face? Who has someone and you really care? Yeah, yeah. All of you fellas that you better beware. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's out to get your wound. I'm sorry. Your fellas, they sure look shady. They don't know what's tied in your fist. And I don't think they'll miss what they do. They smile in your face. Ladies and gentlemen, here are some special terms. 363 is the terms. But I just realized this is not going to take me to the terms. But take a look. It's in the federal registry. And anything that's in the federal registry, they constitute as law. Look, this is the U.S. Code reference. So I did not know about this. So I'm actually glad I stumbled upon this, y'all. Keep on coming. They don't know. They, they don't know, y'all. Some of these knives out my back, what they do? They smile in my face. All the time they want to take my... Ladies and gentlemen, Code of Federal Regulations are not based on statutes at large. It's administrative law. Don't worry about it. Most people don't know. What they do. Look. Legal guardian of a minor or incompetent person refers to the court-appointed or otherwise qualified person. See, it doesn't have to be court-appointed, regardless of title, who is legally authorized. Whoever takes charge, that makes them their guardian ad litem, legal guardian. Come on now, computer, I don't have all day. As a matter of fact, I got to turn on the auxiliary power because I am running on battery. Hey, guys, this is one of those timeless classics. Deep inside we knew our love was true. Look, a minor... It has not changed. It means an individual under the age of 18. Okay, that's what a minor is. Hold on. But the term minor. See, this is not a term here. This is just a word. It means a person under the age of 18. However, the legal term minor. Hold on. Let's click on it. Something happened, y'all. 
And yesterday was all we had. And oh, a minor is an individual under the age of 18. The term minor also refers to an individual who has attained the age of 18. Like the young man in the article we were just reading, he was 20, but has yet to take control of the securities contained in his or her minor account. See, you have to take control of the securities in your account. What are these securities? Well, does anybody know what a security is? We keep talking about it, so let's find out what security is, shall we? We're going to just search for security. Oh, oh, wow. We tried to find it, y'all. But it just, it's just the sadness, y'all. A state of being free, a danger of threat. Okay, watch. We, we, we have to now do something different. We're going to do an abbreviated search. Yesterday was all we had. A security is an investment in a business. It can take the form of shares of stocks, bonds, or package of loans or mortgages offered for sale by a financial institution or a financial instrument representing investment in a company or an international project. Ladies and gentlemen, securities. So where are your shares? Where are your stocks? Where are your bonds? Okay. You have securities. Where are they? That's what you're trying to find out. So the document I'm working on is to help find that out. That's why I'm doing this video. So I can prove to you that yes, you have this thing called minority and that is because you don't have control of the securities well who got control of my securities oh well that's easy the minor account means an account that the custodian controls on behalf of the minor well who controls your account well all of those custodians go ahead uh yes sir what's your account number okay uh what's your address well sir i have to verify your account before i can gain access do you understand they can't gain access to your account without your approval? Go ahead. Call the cell phone company and tell them, okay, I'm calling about my account. What do you mean? You need my number. You already got my number. Send a caller ID. Sir, I need you to say it. All right? No, you don't. You got my account. You guys are the custodian of the account. You already have this information. Sir, I can't get access to your account without verifying the account. The system won't allow me. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the custodians are in control. Pay attention. The custodians are in control of your accounts. Who's the main custodian? The treasury. Hold on. Link to the custodian's primary account. Let's find out what a primary account is under the code. This administrative code. Primary account means the account that you establish when you first open your Treasury Direct account. Your primary account is a portal used to open and access all of your linked accounts. For more information about primary accounts, go to 363.10. Ladies and gentlemen, that's referring to Treasury Direct. I'm not talking about Treasury Direct. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the trust funds. Now, this is real estate, but let's go here. In contrast, the federal government owns and manages the assets and earnings of most federal trust funds. Okay? I'm talking about these trusts that are set up by government. This document is on our website. You can pull it up. Get a better understanding of what trust exists out there. Understand, there are several trusts. However, a few trust funds, such as the Veterans Special Life Insurance Fund, are established by the law as trust revolving funds. Pay attention. There are a lot of trusts that are established by law. Trust law. 
okay? Securities held by trust funds, as by the government account, as by other government accounts, as by other government accounts, debt held by the public, debt held by the public, debt held by the public, securities held in trust funds, debt held by the public, and gross federal debt are discussed in chapter four of this volume. The Federal Borrowing and Debt. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how many volumes are in uh, this particular publication. But I'm going to suggest that you go and find out. Oh, by the way, this is the White House version of the document. Hold on now. Is this the real estate one? Yeah, that's real estate. Hold on. That was the White House version Nope, that ain't it. Hold on now. You know what? I didn't I didn't open it up. All right, I got to show it. Oh, okay. Whew. All right. Understand something. Treasury Financial Manual. This is the third document. There is a treasury document that is identical to this one. Okay, the only problem is it's not the same document. Printed up the same, but the items line up differently on the page. There are a lot more words added to that document. There is differences. But these are supposed to be things that you're supposed to be relying on. See, pay attention. The vast majority of interfund transactions in the table are payments to the federal funds to the trust funds. These payments include interest payments from the government's fund to the trust fund for interest earned on trust fund balances invested in interest-bearing treasury securities. The payments also include payment by federal agencies to federal employee benefit trust funds and social security trust funds on behalf of current employees and general fund transfers to employee retirement trust fund. See, the question we were asking is, in Britain, they have pension. In Britain, they have pension. Well, where are the pensions here? Do you know that the state of California has a state pension fund? We were originally told that was only for state employees, state workers. That's not true, ladies and gentlemen. That's interesting, ain't it? Do you know who pays Social Security? Well, technically it's the Treasury, but no, it's your state that pays it. What do you mean the state pays Social Security? Well, that's why you, you pay federal income tax, but pay attention. It is your state taxes that processes it. That's why you have to be registered on the state level. That's why you have to apply. Pay attention. You have to apply to the state for Social Security. No, I don't have to apply to Social Security Administration. Go and apply to Social Security Administration and see if you don't have to go through state agencies. Well, I do have to go after I apply to the Social Security. That's correct. And by the way, the state agencies will require you to apply to Social Security. Why are you applying to Social Security on the federal level and on the state level? Because there has to be contracts. You have to be given a permission. See, if it's your pension, pay attention, you should be allowed to get access to all of your funds held in trust for you because Social Security is a trust fund, people. If you reach the age of 65, you should be able to collect everything. It's a trust fund. You're the beneficiary. But that's not the case, huh? Even if you were to die and you had a spouse, they're still not able to get everything. They get monthly payments. Why is that? Because of the way the trust is written. They created a law called it Social Security Act. But it's a trust. Pay attention. Go back. Take a look at everything they do. It's trust. You don't believe me? Trust me. No, you don't believe me? Trust me. You don't believe me? Trust me. This is the year to trust. Trust, 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 trust. Even if it's 2085, it's going to be the year to trust. Even if it's 2,955, year to trust. Trust funds and federal funds, year to trust, people. Hold on. Are we talking about trust here? Always going to be talking about trust, ladies and gentlemen. It's a government thing. That's all they do. They hold your monies in trust, trust funds. This is all they do. Trust fund record-keeping exhibits. That's what these documents are for. They're on the site. All of you who they claim, oh, you don't have a, 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 a fund, a trust fund. You don't have an exemption account. You don't have an account with the Treasury. Trust fund bank accounts. Now, we know that they set up all kind of trust fund bank accounts. That's why you guys are getting 98 series number and you're setting up trust. 
those of you who are getting the new sat packs, you will have a certificate of trust and you will have a abstract. Certificate of trust and trust abstract are the same. And you will have a declaration page. Separate. Declaration will also be a part of the trust, but you'll also have a separate declaration page. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you so that you understand this. Some of you are going to be doing certificates of trust and you don't understand what's going on with that document. We're not going to explain it to you. We're going to keep that in-house. Why? Because too many of you are going to try to duplicate what we're doing. <laughs> and you're not going to know what you're doing. Even if you use the same wording, you won't even be sending it to the right agencies. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this is the best thing yet. This is uh, Anita. And, and this album right here, ladies and gentlemen, you talk about an album by someone who was a real singer. I know, I know, they say she had attitude. They say a lot of things. You know, they say the world was flat. Okay, they say a lot of things. The woman can sing. All right, she's going to be in my background. Don't care about y'all background right now. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several things that I am not divulging to the public. I'm not even giving the information to the people at SACOM. I'm keeping those that information in-house, very tightly in-house. Why? Not because I don't want nobody else doing it, but I'm tired of people taking advantage of me. See, we put information out there. They go to our website and they pull that information out and they start their own companies. But then I tell people, hey, just don't gouge anybody. Just don't overcharge anybody. Do you know that some of these people are charging thousands of dollars for documents they got off of our website for free? What the flying? Uh, I'm sorry. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because now there were some smart people out there. At least they thought they were smart. See, what they did is they got our product and they advertised it to other people. And they said, okay, you just fill this out and I'll order it for you and I'll take care of everything. Because the people were older. Pay attention. They were older. So they took care of taking advantage of older people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do one more thing. Then I'm going to get off of this uh, video because I need to. Those of you who have done arbitration agreements, those of you who pay attention, who did the contracts, the SAP packs, and did the incarceration contracts, we are doing I just put 1099C tax refunds. That's all I did. Now, while we do that, give me a second. Do not ever say that this particular person doesn't help people. See, I got a lot of people say, well, you said you're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to don't tell me what the, I'm supposed to be doing. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Ooh. I got a lot of people who are entitled and they think that I'm supposed to do everything for them. Do you remember tax topic 431? Wait, hold on. Doesn't change whether or not you receive a correct form 1099C. Hold on. It says of canceled debt as income on your tax return for the year the cancellation occurs doesn't change whether or not you receive a 1099C. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, we're the creditors. We're supposed to be whether or not we send out a 1099C, but because we're not a bank, we must send out 1099Cs. You guys haven't sent out a 1099C. Don't worry about what response you're going to get on a 1099C. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Don't worry about what their response is going to be. Document everything. Document all your proofs of services. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Where where are you at? Is it right here? Yeah, case text. Watch this. 
okay, let me uh get right here. I said implied consent contracts binding based on conduct. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why your contract says if you fail to respond, if you refuse to respond, if you don't do this, if you don't do this, that's why it says that. Wait a minute. Hold on. I want to see what's in the background. What you doing, case tech? You ain't supposed to be blocking me out. You're supposed to be. I don't want a free trial. I don't want to sign up right now. I'm going to take care of that later. Oh, it don't want me to search no more, y'all. Y'all gotta hold on while I while I while I set up. No, all right. Case text. You done pissed me off in front of my peoples. Now nah, give me a second, y'all. I'll be right back. It really is human nature, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies. I've had to log on to this site, but I just want to let you guys understand something. Both express contracts and contracts implied, in fact, are based on consent. Evidently, in view of the fact that these are contracts, which are usually before the court, it has been said that there is no contract without consent of the parties. Clearly, however, such an observation must have been made without regard. We don't want that one because that's, that's trying to explain something. I don't want that. I want conduct. See, pay attention. They're all saying the same thing. These are several different cases that they're copying each other. Okay, implied consent arises out of the party's course of conduct. Okay, implied consent per contra arises from the party's course of conduct. <laughs> Under Puerto Rican law, a party may tacitly enter into an agreement through implied consent. The determining element is of this implied consent is the person's conduct. When you specifically tell a person that you have a duty to respond, we have a prior relationship, and they don't respond, I showed you just did the video, and you know what, I didn't put that case in. And I need to go back and rewatch that video because I was just listening to it the other day where I showed you in the contract where the court said that implied consent that the party's conduct, where they have a duty to respond. Hold on. Uh, no, hold on. We'll do it this way. Now, ladies and gentlemen, many of you have cases. You have to respond to these stupid courts. And many of you are running into problems responding to the courts because you don't know what to say. All you have to do is put your question in the case text. Pull up the cases. Find the cases that are right in line with what you're having to argue. And there you go. It's already written for you. As stated earlier, California law recognizes that acceptance of a contract's terms may be implied through actions or inactions. These are all the cases that support that. These are what the contracts are based on. Mr. Starks knew that, and so did I. The reason why we put the templates out there. Sign the agreement because there is no signature and only a timestamp on the outline employment application appears to be directed at the contractual element of consent. Now, essential elements of contract, essential consent. Under California law, consent to a written contract may be implied by conduct. Ladies and gentlemen, just want you guys to understand that many of you didn't do your research. The contracts had all the language it needed. 
you're going before these courts and letting them tell you that there is no contract. And you're not saying, well, 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 hold on a minute. They they documented they received it. So as long as they documented they received it, that's all I need. I, I, I don't need them to be sitting up there adding no signature. They knew what the terms were. And if they wanted to, they had an opportunity to opt out. And they chose not to opt out. They they even wrote. They didn't even respond. We have a case against Penny Mac where that's the exact case. That's Penny Mac's defense is that they didn't respond. They received it, but they didn't respond. We have several cases where they received the contract and didn't respond. So we get the play. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I just thought I'd share these little tidbits with you because you're going to need this type of information when you gets to going where you gets to the going. Now, I think it was this one. This one had the VPN, so it was running a little slow. This is Opera. Opera comes with a free VPN. Ladies and gentlemen, reserve requirements. Each depository institution shall maintain reserves against it's non-personal time deposits in a ratio of three per centum or three percent. Okay, these are the reserve deposits that we were talking about under this. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is the reference. Pay attention. Oh no, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. This is the reference to 363.6 reserve requirements. This is the reference for 363.6. When we looked at the code, this is where it took us to. I don't think that's where it took you to. I think that's where you wanted to go. Really. <sighs> and so, so especially 363.6. Okay. They, when we went to the congressional site, govinfo.gov, or is that the presidential site? Don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, it told us about this. Okay. And with that being the case, let's do something. Uh, we were doing minors. So we're going to do, we're going to look for minors. Okay. Am I, I'm just going to put minor. Nope. Minor doesn't appear. Uh. I put infant. It says no matches. So neither minor nor let's do custodian. No, no custodian. Huh. This ain't that long. Let's see if we find something. Mutual Savings Bank, Mutual Savings Bank, any insured credit union member, any member as defined, any savings for the purpose of this section associated the term bank means any insured or non-insured bank as defined in Section 3 of the Federal Deposit Insurance Act, other than a mutual savings bank and savings bank a transaction account non-personal time deposits term reversible liabilities means transaction accounts and personal time deposits net balance loans obligations which are may be subject to reserve requirements oh that's a check a check has to have funds in reserve uh in order to prevent uh let's see depository institution maintains reserves no depository institution Begin in 1981, no later than December 1st, the board shall issue, who cares? Any reserve requirements imposed under this subject be informally applied to all transactions and all depository, uh, the findings of five members, the board, the board, the board, the board. Didn't give me what I thought it was going to give me. So, nope, this ain't, this ain't what I'm looking for. So, it wasn't the gun of the smoke that I thought it was. Okay. But I just thought I'd check it out because it was there when I was looking at what I was looking at. You know what I'm saying? So let me individual, an in individual case, the federal supervisory authority waives 
a liquidity requirement and waives the penalty for failing to satisfy the liquidity requirement. They have to have funds in liquidity reserve. That's the waiving of liquidity. Earning and balances, promulgating of rules. Now watch, let me show you how we got here and then we're gonna finish. Cause that puts us at an hour. That's two hour long videos today. I gotta go outside. I'm getting ready to put the post up for the uh, solar panels for the fencing. And I probably won't do that until tomorrow. I also got to go into the city tomorrow. Trying to hesitate as to whether or not I'll do it tomorrow. So this isn't the page. It's got to be this one here. I'm going to go back to 1099. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have those accounts and you have that debt, start documenting your debt. Remember, you issue the 1099s. You are the creditor. You're issuing a 1099-C, not a 1099-OID, not a 1099-A, not a 1099-G, not a 1099-F-U-C-R-K. You know, you're not issuing any of those. You're focusing on 1099-C. All right, just that simple. Some of you ain't going to get it, and oh well. Now look, I just got to go. Y'all have a Coke and a smile. Uh, and this one says the balance. Uh, informational statement, report the details about the debt that was canceled. Okay. Again, you have to document it. So that's what the... Go back and read topic 431. You know, I think 431 and 435 might be important. But I do know topic 431 talks about canceled debt. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about you forgiving the debt. I ain't forgiving. You're going to forgive the debt if you want to get your tax credits. And by the way, we're not going to call them tax credits. We're going to call them carry forward credits because most of that debt is over a year old. Oh, finally. Finally. Said, I said that was going to be it, but I forgot there was more things because I've been pausing and all of that stuff. Give me a second. Also, oh, you're not going to show up. It was here a moment ago, and now it doesn't want to show up. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Corpus Juris Secundum. And this is, I don't know why that first page don't want to show up, but just want to let you guys know. The law is, hold on, the intent and purposes of the settler or grantor or trustor of the trust is law of the trust. You'll see throughout this document where a trust agreement provides for a power of appointment, the instrument exercising the power is read into the agreement. This is their stupid trust law, how they have it set it up. Determining what rights are created by a trust instrument, the intent of the creator is controlling. The interpretation of a trust is determined by the rights, uh, what rights are created and what powers are reserved. Intent of the settler or grantor is controlling. The grantor's intentions is law of the trust. The law of the trust. This is already on the site. This is known as Corpus Juris Secundum Trust. Corpus Juris Secundum Trust Notes or Notes on Trust. That's this document. Okay? It's on the website. You need to go over that because you need to know why you get to create trust agreements. Ladies and gentlemen, as I stated before, I will be putting this document up, which will let you know after 180 days, this is the IRS codes that speak as to your right to collect the debt by set off because the federal government has the same right. So you get to do it because they have the common law right. Their offsets are based on common law. So if they have a common law right as government, you have the same common law right. Okay. Then we got child support debts. Okay. State income tax debts. It's all right here for you. And see, federal tax refund. Social Security. 
black lung, right road retirement, all that other stuff is right here for you. We're going to put this up on the site for you, ladies and gentlemen. So let me go ahead and save it as we're going to talk. I'm going to call it tax credits, tax credit write offs. Okay. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So y'all can locate it. I'm going to put it under, I'm going to put it under the trust documents. Okay. So I don't have to be going all over the place. I'm putting it in the trust documents. So watch this. Okay, let's get that zero zero two out of there. All right, so that takes care of that. That's done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to suggest that you guys go to the balance and type in Google what is IRS form. 199c or 1099c excuse me uh and i want you to put in the balance.com and go and read this article so that you will be able to balance your books many of you guys are sitting up here asking me about our style money orders when you don't need an hour style money order to do this you already have the information to do this the government already has the programs there for you to do this look requirements for form all of the information is right here Okay, don't contact me asking me how to fill the form out. That's not my job. My job is to show you that it exists, show you the direction you're supposed to be going in. Now, don't go to YouTube and listen to those guys who don't know what they're doing. Go and talk to a quote-unquote tax professional. Tell them what you're doing. Don't hide it. Don't act like you're doing something wrong. Say, this is what I'm doing. The law says I can do this. And then you'll show them that form that I just showed you. Let them do the research. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Now, by the way, I gave four letters earlier today in a row, and I wasn't trying to. I'm just tired. So I apologize for that because it wasn't supposed to be those four letters. Okay. Even though they weren't said in that context and nothing was inferred in the context, it wasn't supposed to be those four. I was supposed to be coming up with some other letters at the end, and I didn't. That's why you go back and listen. I pause. Okay, so just wanted to say that, get that out there, just because they're, they're people out there who just won't understand. You could face fines and other penalties if the income isn't reported or any associated tax isn't paid on time. Ladies and gentlemen, you can face penalties if you don't report these write-offs. Do your 1099s. It's greater than $600. Do your 1099s. Don't worry about it. I'm late on doing mine, too. Don't worry about it. Pay the fee from the credits. Got to go, okay? Y'all take care. I got to go. And I'm going to take a break for a minute, a couple of days, because I just tired. Got to go. Goodbye.